It's Monday, March 28th, 2022, and this is the Almost Daily Zencast. This is the Almost Daily Zencast. I just said that. Hello, and namaste. Thank you for tuning in to today's episode. I am your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Let's get started. Hello and namaste to everyone around the world, including such nations as Barbados, Chile, the Philippines, Spain, South Africa, Austria, Portugal, Ireland, Turkey, Poland, Russia, Netherlands, Malta, Australia, Japan, Brazil, Mexico, Puerto Rico, France, Canada, Germany, Sweden, the United Kingdom, the United States, and India. I humbly greet you and thank you and welcome you for tuning in. Welcome to the Almost Daily Zencast and the shared mental space in the theater of our imaginations that we create together when we sit down for these cozy little talks. Thank you for tuning in. I am indeed your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zeppo. Fictional character featured in um, the Zeppoverse novels, which you can find uh, some sample chapters for over at wattpad.com. To find that link, go to solo.do forward slash Mr. Zeppo and visit and explore the many dimensions of the Zeppoverse. <clears throat> All right. All the business aside, welcome back. It's been a long and arduous month. Uh, I took some uh, personal time off from speaking to you publicly as part of the public discourse uh, of the world because I didn't think much was going to evolve uh, and I needed some time. Not that I, I, I don't mean to sound dismissive. I just felt a bit grim about the, um, that intervening period of time. Uh, and uh, I didn't have much new to say. <laughs> uh, I still feel this, the way I feel, uh, so please do check out my most recent episodes about the conflict in Ukraine to get a context if you haven't heard them already. And I apologize now in advance for anyone who's new. There are a few episodes here and there that have the odd technical issue, some of which um, include uh, like a mic volume adjustment problem. <clears throat> and two of my better episodes about <laughs> the recent development of stuff going on in Ukraine in terms of my, my own feelings as to how I express myself um, were unfortunately you know, somewhat ruined by the fact that I had my mic settings all wrong and done. Um, uh, it's a pain to listen to. You gotta like adjust your volume down really low, and it still kind of sounds like crap. And I'm sorry, and uh, I'm not tech savvy enough to know how to clean that up. I know that that's probably possible, and I might tinker with it someday. But um, I'm not like I know what to do, you know. And that's that's when I take action. When I'm, my, as far as technical things, my brain's like, yes, we know what to do. Then I'll dive right in, even if it's intimidating. But I digress. To summarize, anyone who hasn't caught on to the recent episodes. Uh, I generally oppose war um, as I agree, I am inclined to agree with the assessment by um, one of the last living survivors uh, that served, I forget if I think it was the UK, but maybe he's an American soldier. Um, And I've had this, I've, I've, I've referenced this quote and this meme before. His name is Henry something, and I don't have it in front of me. I apologize. This show is real, raw, and radically unscripted. I just say what's on my mind as it comes to me, sometimes with some notes and some things that I want to read, but rarely with enough foresight to have all of the memes that I might reference laid out in front of me, because I don't know what's going to ping. But um, this one meme, which you've come across probably, and which you can probably find if you search under uh, with the terminology like quote by longest, last living World War I veteran. It might be World War II. I guess it depends on which universe uh, and how many Bearstein Bears uh, unit of, uh, <laughs> what's that called? Um, the phenomena where you like have a divergence and something suddenly slightly different than it used to be or it appears to be as such and often cited is the Bearstein Bears controversy, but how do you pronounce it? How's it spelled? But I digress. Um, <laughs> uh, 
where, where was I? What was I going on about? Oh, the meme. This guy, uh, this gentleman, this this honored um, and much respected veteran of uh, of one of the two world wars summarizes his opinion on war, uh, and I believe he said this in his retirement years after no longer being an active participant, Um, but it's nothing more than organized murder for profit. And of course, you know, there is the much more broader common understanding that that only those um, at the top benefit from war, uh, and all those at the bottom suffer in one way or another. Uh, And quite a bit of suffering has been going on, as well as, uh, simultaneously, quite a bit of rhetorical debate as to where the where the right side and wrong side of history may or may not be on this issue. Um, to me, it's clear and obvious. Uh, but then again, I get accused of being all kinds of things. Um, I assure you that uh, that most of the time those accusations are incorrect and invalid. <laughs> In fact, very rarely do people accuse me of being something I actually am. Uh, and um, springboarding off that thought. And, and realizing I was going to try and recap for those who haven't heard the, the more recent episodes, especially to avoid the, the audio dilemma. Um, I understand all the rationalizations and reasons and explanations given. Like, I, I cognitively can process them and grasp their point. Um, but I draw the line at, you know, who's who's got the suffering going on. Now, both sides, uh, as we've seen in, in this particular struggle, uh, in this particular conflict, uh, both sides are suffering, um, as is unfortunately the case most of the time. In most conflicts, bottom line, the people who suffer are the people who have been convinced that organized murder for profit is a reasonable thing to participate in and, uh, and that there are reasons my problem is that I find I find all of that very difficult. I find all of that a very hard uh, pill to swallow that really sticks in my craw um, because I'm in, because I'm inclined to agree with such assessments as war is organized murder for profit, um, and, and it's the profit part that chaps my hide, as it were, um, and the you know organized murder part like. I, I've yet to take any survey of historic record and go, yep, yep, wow, that war sure really fixed all those problems and set everything straight and made for a utopia. Uh, and and I am, I'm also inclined to comprehend um, that despite any attempt to, to rationalize it otherwise... It is clear to me that there is no way, based on historical evidence, that we will ever end the endemic war problem, the endemic activity of ongoing war, by engaging in the fighting of war. There are, spe- there are people in this world carrying chips on their shoulder and... and, and keeping a beef alive, if such a phrase can be coined, uh, about stuff that happened generations ago. Never mind what's going on now. And, you know, the last 5, 10, 15, 20 some odd thousand years worth of violent conflicts make it clear to me that they only displace power. They only disrupt Um, the activities found disagreeable by the victorious side. And most of the time, they are initiated by aggressors that are using rationalizations that really uh, hold no truck, hold no real value. Uh, And I've, I've been really direct and blunt and stated before what I think. And I understand that many people, uh, for various reasons... Uh, have, uh, in their own minds, come to other conclusions. And in a free universe, you know, what are you going to do besides live with the fact that that's the case? You know, we've got to live with the fact that 
there are individuals that come to conclusions that are to the vast majority of the rest of us uh, entirely unacceptable um and and therein i think the very the very way that human nature operates is what dictates these trends these problematic issues it's where it's where the root cause is right and what is behind that is where the real root cause is where we often talk about ending things or solving problems and we fight and fight and fight but is that fighting as figurative as it may be because politically we don't go taken t- to stabbing each other over over policy not as often as we w- once used to um, and this collective problem uh, is clearly deep rooted if we want to get biblically allegorical I mean you can take any any conflict going on in the world minor, domestic major, national international and go well you know it, it all traces back to Cain and Abel and what are you going to do about that um, are we gonna are we gonna go to war about that issue and about other unresolved issues? No, obviously, because hitherto uh, and up until now, that has only displaced the power, disrupted the the behavior, and and then propagated causalities, new ones and recycled ones, to propagate further conflict. We have to step back from the outrageous feelings, as as real and valid as they may be, the feelings of outrage, the feelings of this or that, the, the anger attached to, to the narratives, and A, check in with the humanity, right? Like, who is suffering? Who's suffering the most? Who is suffering the most needlessly? And then turn you know in the other direction and not in a judgmental way because judging uh, a perceived oppressor is uh infinitely easy and uh and i would argue primarily pointless um yes accountability requires the identifying of those responsible so that they may be held accountable but judgment is an entirely different thing. We're talking about the difference between discerning what is and is not, you know, the truth in in a world riddled with accusations flying back and forth, many of them exaggerated to say the least, and quite a few examples clearly nonsensical. Um, and if we run around judging people based on, on these accusations, we achieve very little besides creating conflict whether that's at our interpersonal you know private life level uh or at the uh, the global international level uh these things correlate they're not you know they're not perfect translations of each other but um but there's there's a commonality there that tragically in my understanding of things in my survey of recent and past history we generally just neglect whether we realize it or not right there's both passive and active neglect uh, and that's that uh, behind the often contrived although sometimes very serious and legitimate political rhetorical or rhetoric um, uh, based uh, argumentations about why this particular military action is valid and that particular military, ac- military action is not etc there's the deep rooted deep seated very messy very um what's the word i'm looking for very uh, very uh clearly difficult to um to address uh causality in my opinion right sure there's rationales and there's uh there's situational context that contributes to the 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 mechanics of the causality but behind behind every despot behind every villain behind every bad guy and i'm speaking in the broadest terms possible because as i'm trying to suggest 
the the devil's in the details, yes. But and what does the devil do? Sets traps, right? The devil's the, if the devil is transliterated, transliterally, uh, uh, transdimensionally, transcendentally understood as the ego. And I know that there's that's a big step, that's a big leap, uh, and I'm not doing a, I'm not doing a very particularly specific job of like presenting that argument in this moment, and in part because it's something I've I've discussed various ways and from various angles in different episodes. Despite whatever the title says, I tend to try to bring it all to this nexus of 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 exploring you know, our collective understanding, um, and it, and that, uh, the understanding that I'm focusing on, our collective understanding of those things spiritual, um, not religious, not dogmatic, not rhetorical, not, not ideological, but, but, but a living understanding of, of those things beyond the material, right? That, that either I'm, I'm crazy or seemed to have um, a real meaningful impact on our daily lives, which we traditionally ne- ignore. That's why I'm always talking about not dr- not throwing the baby out with the bathwater. Um, the baby being a, a real, if we can if we can put it in quotes, a real organic, naturally occurring sp- set of spiritual phenomena. Right, and the bathwater being all of the dogma and rhetoric and organized religious ideology that 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 supplants our direct relationship with the naturally occurring organic phenomena upon which all of these religious organizations are technically based, but from which they like diverged. They got all neurally divergent on their own asses and like distracted themselves from the practical modalities of spiritual activity that was brought to our attention by the founding fathers and mothers. Because I, I I'm deeply of the opinion that there were females, as many female spiritual teachers as there were male, uh, and that we just neglect them in in the in the uh, archives of history for the, all the obvious reasons that, that humanity to this day continues to struggle with its remnants of a once prevalent and dominant sort of toxic masculinity. And we can get, I don't want to get into that whole debate. I've just, I've addressed it in multiple episodes. I couldn't point to you to a specific one, but somewhere I got sidebarred into like my opinion of toxic masculinity. So we should put a pin on the cork board in the, with I should I should probably develop a color code besides just red pins. There should be different colors for like we've discussed it before, but it deserves its own special feature at a little little focus episode where we talk about it in depth and try to connect um, whatever strands may be flapping about in the wind. Uh, and that's this is one of those. I don't have a color for it yet. I guess we can go like primary colors and just figure out which ones are which. But neither here nor there. Um, I'm rambling at length and uh, remembering because my imaginary friend here, DJ Zed, is indicating with his subtle, almost impossible to hear, um, stoic facial gestures, which render just the the, the minutest of whirly gig sounding steampunky, you know, gear and bits clanky sounds that you can't hear because I don't have a sound effect set up for it. Uh, is reminding me that we need to play a little music and and have a, a, a cleansing of the palate and and a little audio logical break. So here is for your um, your your free consumer entertainment grunge mechanic, uh, a little experimental track by DJ Z on the fictional album Master Droids. Is this on the 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 uh, the, cl- the SoundCloud, which in some dimensions is called Cloud Sound? Um, which is why I sometimes trip all over pronouncing it. Um, it's not, is it? Should we throw it up there? I don't even remember how it sounds. Here you go. Enjoy the track, and then uh, remember to bookmark and visit often uh, whenever we're not live on the air and talking all over the music. Uh, uh, soundcloud.com forward slash Mr. Zeppo, where you will find uh, DJ Z and Mr. Zeppo, uh, the playlist.
I just checked DJ's head. It's not on there. We need to we need to uh, migrate this track and uh, and share with the world. Uh, there's a little bit more to it, but I'll leave you lingering and wanting more as we uh, phase back into the back half of today's uh, chit chatty episode. Um, as always, friends, deep gratitude for you joining me and tuning in to my real, unfiltered, uh, and uh, unmanipulated thoughts. At least I don't. I mean, I don't pretend to be any better than anyone else, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, I'm I'm using my faculties to the best uh, of my abilities. Uh, to come to my own conclusions. If I align with other people's, uh, you know, so be it. Do I think I'm being manipulated by anyone? I'm doing my best not to, friends, and no one is directly and overtly telling me what to say. Uh, I, I wouldn't mind have, you know, having a, a cushy job somewhere where I just read a script, but uh, this is not that. Uh, this is me uh, as, a, as a creative person presenting to you my own thoughts and concerns about real life events going on in the world today as we see them wrapped up in the delightful cosplay uh, uh, of the fictional character which is my own creation um, which does this in the setting of the world in which he lives which is why the crossover it's meant to be a little bit of a cross promotional tease to entice you to go read the uh, the uh, tease chapters uh, and join me in the journey of developing um, that those titles into completed fictional sci-fi adventure uh, espionage novels, um, some sort of genre genre mashup. Uh, join me over on Wattpad. You can find the link on solo.to forward slash Mister Zeppo, uh, and uh, we'll also be doing some sessions on. Uh, on the Twitch live stream, which you can also catch on various other platforms, as I'm a big fan of the service provided by Restream.io. So if you're on a streaming platform and you think you've seen me on there before, check it out and keep an eye out for when I go live. Um, Hopefully, all things going well, this Wednesday, we'll be having a catch-up revisit uh, episode of that and be live streaming uh, a discussion about where the, you know the state of the world as we see it now in the sample chapters, why it's a, a, a bloody awful mess in some of the you know some of the pages, and and where uh, it's hopefully going, um, and uh, yeah, hopefully you tune in for that. Back to today's episode uh, and subject matter at hand. When it comes to other people out there in 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 the world speaking publicly vis-a-vis various media platforms. Um, I take everything with a grain of salt. And there are some folks who I can agree with on, in principle, a few things. And there are some people out there with, with, with whom I just can't agree on, in principle, at all, because of a few things. Um, and there are people who are like, that sounds like uh, I can't disagree with. And one of the people that hitherto, up until now, uh, and I can't speak for any event in the future, uh, who, whose uh, who's professional opinion, as I've seen stated on his personal social media and it, you know interviews and whatnot that he does across various platforms, uh, that I can't I can't find anything that makes me go whoa wow I can't I've really got to like back away from this particular thing and that I generally find myself going you know that makes a lot of sense uh, is uh, is former U.S. ambassador to Russia. Michael Anthony McFowl, um, and obviously I don't I don't know the guy personally, uh, and as I'm always saying, you know, due diligence should be done, and that takes more than ten minutes. And I'll admit to you guys, friends, because of you know obvious transparency, if there's if there's buried hidden things about this guy, I don't know them, right? If there's egregious reasons for which I should not be, you know, at least you know acknowledging that that his thinking is is in line with my own. Um, I, I will happily retract this reference and 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 ref, you know refrain from from indulging and consuming his his content any further. But as of yet, I haven't come across any in in the light bit of of looking into you know his background. And, I'm, and by that I mean you know the bare minimum that one can do on the interwebs. Uh, so it's it's at that level. But at least I'm I'm transparent about it. I don't pretend to be anything other than what I am, folks other than what I'm pretending to be vis-a-vis the cosplay, but that's openly acknowledged. It's not like I'm, I'm trying to fool anyone. This isn't, this isn't what's-his-name's War of the Worlds. Although he wasn't trying to fool anyone either. That's a fun story. Put a pin in it. 
I should do an episode about it in media reviews if I ever fire that up, that special segment up and really get it going. Speaking of which, before we get back to the conflict in Ukraine, a bit, let's dip into the media review mindset for a hot second because it is all the rage right now. It's got, it's set the internet on fire. The Oscars, um, history making moment uh, last night. I didn't even watch it. I thought for some reason it was next weekend because I don't follow that sort of thing closely despite being a movie nerd. I know it sounds crazy. I'm a, I'm a movie nerd, but I'm my own special weird kind of goofball version of that. And, um, and I don't really nerd out about the Oscars. I used to try, but it's a bit like sports ball. I like it if I'm going to a party and people are hosting a watch party and they're socializing and stuff. But if I'm sitting at home, there's things I'd rather be doing, you know? And, I, and I'll find out who won and I'll find out what, what everyone's talking about within minutes anyways because of the way social media is. Uh, so there's a lot of talk about the incident um, and, and the, the person that was arguably the victim of assault is not pressing charges. So there's that. There's a lot of people quite cynically convincing themselves and insisting that it was staged for reasons that I don't, um, I don't know, I don't, I don't get, and and that I, I haven't really chased down yet. Um, but from what I've seen and the like emotional vibe I get from watching Will Smith. That looked real. That looked like he personally sort of tried to laugh it off. And here's my take, right? Because I've, and, and, and I'm being legit, like, uh, above board. Like, I, I didn't watch the ceremony. I just have seen the, 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 the various references to it. And there might be something about it. I might be missing a moment that isn't being included in any, any of the packages. And I get that. Um, and, and I'm not into taking sides. But here's what I understand. Um, and what I perceived, he, he seemed to try to laugh it off. And then he then was compelled to, um, in, in a sort of example of where, where we get, where we can go off into toxic masculinity. And I'm not accusing him of being wrapped up in that. I, I've never perceived that from him. Plenty of other people in, in, in public life seem to be, you know, uh, firmly established on a foundation that normalizes a, a level of masculinity identity uh, narrative that is toxic. Um, I've never gotten that vibe from him, but this is the precipice. This, and he kind of calls it out in himself, I think. I, again, I didn't see the full speech, and I'm going to try to make the effort if I'm ever going to do in the recent future, uh, in the near future, the recent future. That's a fun juxtaposition of words. But if I'm going to do in the near future a media review, like if I if I get the Mr. Zeppo's totally irrelevant media review segment back up and running this week, I'll definitely talk about it. Uh, and for that, I'll make the effort of watching as big of a broad of a, an edited cut of the of the incident as I can find. And I think that he, from what I saw to wrap up my thoughts on this. I think he was sincerely, like, felt bad, but also didn't feel bad. You know, he was like, sorry, not sorry. Um, it, they may or may not be friends and social, uh, in each other's social circles, but I bet if they were in a private, if they were at a private event at, like, a dinner gathering of some kind that wasn't out in the world, out in public, and he'd made that, cracked that joke, they would have had words, and he might have slapped the guy, Right? And we would be hearing about it in the tabloids after the fact, based on rumors or something. And and I get it. I'm not defending it, but I am saying that there. You know, here's the most interesting thing that I saw in the commentary in the in the immediate aftermath. As these things tend to generate a lot of commentary, you'll see a lot of sort of stuff parroting the basic us versus them dilemma that that it can be evoked in any situation not not necessarily because it is an us versus them wedge issue by design but rather that is so baked into the cake culturally that we just we tend to fall into that thinking right what uh, but someone pointed out the following which i found the most insightful of the things that i came across admittedly a limited range of things um, but since that happened yesterday, someone, uh, and not, not like a media person, but just someone that happens to be in my social media circle, pointed out that as an educator, 
they they themselves um, being an educator and working with 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 students of various ages, what they saw behaviorally was was um, was a low key bully, right? In in the commentary being made vis a vis the joke, that there's there's multiple kinds of bullies. And some are blunt and top, you know, kind of top down. I'm bigger and stronger and better than you, so therefore I will harass you. Uh, and some are like, you know, the com- the gestures, the comedians, those who think that they gain power vis a vis popularity, vis a vis a rough and tumble kind of sense of humor, often rationalized in a sort of tough love kind of way, or the or just excused, never mind rationalized, just excused as it's just a joke. Uh, and that that is a form of bullying. Now, I'm not accusing anybody of being anything. I, is Chris Rock a bully? I don't know. I, To be honest with you, I've only seen him in film and TV, and I've never watched, uh, to the best of my recollection, I don't think I've ever watched any of his specials. Um, I'll go look. Is he, is he of the sort of... What was the name of that guy? He was a character. He was He was totally cosplaying a character he invented um, but he would be brutal in his commentary about you know gender about people about individuals uh, almost all of them public figures as part of his stand up is that what you know what Chris Rock was trying to go for and is there's a lot of questions does violence solve anything no do I understand why people get through contextual uh, events um, get themselves to the, the that precipice? Absolutely. Have I been there myself? Un, undeniably. Um, it would be foolish of me to pretend otherwise. Who, who hasn't? Uh, a rare few, right? Uh, and, and the reality is, if you're going to make a joke at someone's expense... You're 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 like tiptoeing towards that door and and like mockingly announcing it. Um, and violence is a two way thing. That's the other thing, right? Uh, except for when it's not. And then even then it becomes that because you know you've got basically three options: uh, defend yourself by you know taking defensive violent action, run away. Uh, or allow yourself to be crucified, and and that middle option is a difficult one to take, despite the 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 living example given, right? And that's the the sad tragedy uh, in post World War uh, policy in pro- in post World War thinking. You know, not everyone's a Christian, but most of the people, most of the the the, the public figures that leading themselves and each other into conflict tend to be, except for when they're obviously fighting, you know, someone who isn't. But I digress. Um, I don't know. I don't know their the religion the 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 self identified you know pronouncements of the religious status of either. Uh, either Chris Rock or, or Will Smith, and, and I generally don't have any particular issue against either of them. Um, and what I'm the only reason I bring it up and, and want to talk about it is because it, it relates to at a at a at a zoomed out, you know, correlation sort of place. Uh, it relates to the, the the broad stroke problematic issues of war, um, and, and and me talking about bringing it back to Cain and Abel. An individual willing to mock someone else, especially someone else whose condition they're using uh, as the inspirational nugget for the mockering, for the for the it's just a joke, um, is is founded on or or sp- explicitly about uh, a disability, a disease, a, a, a problematic, and already. You know, painful issue in someone's life. No matter how you slice it, that's punching down. Uh, and and as uh, I've seen, you know, uh, going around lately, there's plenty of wisdom about like it's you know, comedy is meant to be about punching up. Uh, and by that I mean 
you know the 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 spectrum of comedy that avails itself to cruelty um, uh, uh, easily is traditionally meant to be saved and focus on those in positions of power that are abusing that power as a means of disarming them and sort of disillusioning their sycophants, making them wake up from the illusion that this person is worthy of their endless devotion. And when you do it uh, at someone who is theoretically your equal, right? Your, 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 uh, your, what is, what's the word? Um, when everyone has a profession in common, there's a term for that. Um, and it's just not coming up and I apologize. Uh, your associates, you know, when you turn it on, on, on your tribe, on your own tribe, on people that are, um, part of the same industry that you're working in, part of the same vibe, part of the same ethnic community that you're a part of, uh, and you and you poke at you know someone's partner that's going through a difficult, very emotionally draining, very challenging um, a disability or disease or disorder. Like what? What? Where's where's the um, where's the honor in that? Right? There's supposed to be honor in comedy to some degree um, because it can be painful, because it can be disarming, because it can be successfully funny and brutally raw and brutally, uh, uh, you know, penetrating. Uh, and what's the point of doing that to someone um, that isn't in a position of power and isn't, a, you know, obviously openly abusing that power? You know, why take, why take that, that turn? I mean, there's free will and all. Uh, and there's always the argument that it's anything that's funny, there's nothing sacred and anything that's funny is funny. And some people lean into that. I can only um, accept that that is available to people because of free will, right? Uh, I don't have to necessarily abide by it. Um, I can. I don't condone what Mr. Smith did necessarily. Uh, I. And I also can't. I'm not judging it, right? Like that. That joke was. I would agree with him. That joke was out of line. And if he was a friend of mine, if I was a sidekick, if I was part of his entourage, and this did happen at a private event, I would step in between them immediately and tell them both, the, the, bro, this was, that joke was inappropriate and, and pushing, you know, escalating any further isn't either. Um, and, and you, you know, let's back away from this and deal with this, like, conscious, conscientious uh, uh, and thoughtful, mindful Zen Zen individuals, right? To the best of our ability, because I'm that kind of guy. So that's my stance about it here. Uh, even though I don't know them, I don't know them. But if I did, if I'd been sitting there, I would have been like my friend, um, my brother in Christ. My if I don't know if he is, considers himself Christian or not. Um, my my brother in 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 the cosmic womb. And there's something that even if you don't agree with me, like it's hard to fight off. Like you can't, you can't disagree. You know, the cosmic womb, if it's alive and it's a and it's a womb, we're all brothers and sisters in it. Um, like this is not the way, friend. This is not the way. Like, um, and it, to both of them, right? To both of them, like you should have, you should have, could have, would have saved a zinger of that quality to someone who isn't fighting, uh, you know, a painful disease, uh, uh, you know, that, so that level of antagonism should have been saved for, I mean, was there, was there any scathing, brutal joke, uh, that was, that can be considered true satire and, um, and political, uh, commentary made about Ukraine uh, and about, uh, about Putin's invasion? I don't know. I didn't see the rest of the show, right? I know that there was, messages of support and whatnot and solidarity uh, with the Ukrainian people. Uh, to bring it back to that, let's transition away and, and bring the show to its uh, logical conclusion. Um, it's much harder to be an ally or a, a member of, of, of a community and step in between two nations uh, that, have, that have, you know, created the con- conditions um, 
that we find ourselves in now and that are costing human lives uh, and that are pretextually, you know, we're, we're instigated on pretexts, pretextual excuses that, that really don't jive with the reality on the ground, right? And that, and that even if they were re- remotely closer to the truth, y- you still baked into the cake of, of, of rationalizing and taking the action as taken, Right, I'm talking about Putin here, uh, and I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm tragically not not in a position of being blissfully unaware that people in Russia listen to this show, and I don't mean to cause problems, um, and I, uh, and you shouldn't, uh, technically you shouldn't be because you know I, I can't I cannot conform nor comply with with um, the intellectually dishonest uh, legislation that was recently brought into place, right? Like, my biggest problem with anybody anywhere uh, trying to rationalize and support um, what, what the Russian army is doing is, is the, the way in which um, the, the, the self-proclaimed ethno-nationalist autocrat uh, in control of the, the entire machine uh, is is actively behaving in a, hypoc- in a in a fashion that's clearly brutally hypocritical, right? Like, I'm sorry, I don't, it doesn't matter who you are. If you claim over, that there's Nazis over there and that you're going to go stop them, like some sort of self proclaimed hero, but you're also simultaneously, you know, uh, engaging in behavior that's categorically behaving, you know, that's categorically and undeniably in the realm of, in the spectrum of what the Nazis did, uh, both at home and uh, in the, the theater of war that you created. Uh, I can't get behind that, and I can't buy into uh, the the self-glamorizing uh, pretextual excuses. Um, and I can't abide by the simping for that, right? Um, and uh, And I can't abide by uh, well, you know, I'm I'm beyond that jurisdiction, but also, you know, he's there. There's complicated issues there, and so um, to anyone listening um, in Russia, first of all, I'm not trying to be rude or, or disrespectful, right? Um, there is plenty of evidence that clearly indicates that uh, the control of information is heavy-handed to the point of it being Orwellian. Um, and that, yes, for sure, there's problematic issues everywhere and in all places, um, but uh, to the extent that that the reasons being given and peddled, sold, in my opinion, um, immorally... <laughs> Be, you know, the reasons being utilized from the get-go, uh, even as there are subtle twists and turns and adjustments to the proclaimed rationale and supposed goal and objective, um, they don't qualify as valid to me uh, because of the hypocrisy of the way in which the same, you know, the same authority is oppressing uh, their own people. Um, and and you know in, uh, encouraging the soldiers on the ground um, in this incursion, in this military action, uh, in this uh, as you know as people out here like to point out uh, in defiance uh, of the denial, um, it's his, it's his war. He he created the situation. Uh, you know, going back to the illegal annexation of Crimea and the instigation, which was probably also not in compliance of international law, uh, of the you know the separatist the the Russian backed separatist movement in in the Donbass region. Um, it's all a big setup, um, and we can we can argue and debate about the nuances and the complexities, and about the 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 rationalizations coming from. Um, from the concerted efforts being made by parties unknown, and for me, to me personally, to to promote um, 
the, this uh, this rationalization because there clearly is there is there is a, a specific and concerted effort uh, being carried out to inculcate as many people as possible around the world in supporting um, uh, uh, this activity uh, under the guise of supposed heroic goals. Um, And as I said before, and I'll say again, if you proclaim to be the good guy and accuse someone of being the bad guy and then proceed to lower yourself and engage in behavior that is exactly what qualifies in the supposed, you know, universal truth that we all share, a uh, bad guy as a bad guy, then how can you still consider to be yourself a good guy? And that applies in all directions, dear friends. Um, I've said it about this particular conflict, and I'll say it about others. If, if, if the aggressor that is most overtly uh, at fault in the immediate context, right? If the invading party is claiming to be a good guy, liberating so-and-so group of people from these evil tyrants, and yet they themselves are behaving in a way that qualifies as evil and tyrannical, I can't get behind that gravy train, folks. I can't get, I can't get on board. Uh, and I will uh, stand with you know with the victims, even if they themselves have problematic issues in the way they've behaved in the past. Because right now, who's who's getting bombs dropped on them, right? Uh, for example, to take a completely theoretical example, right? The Republican Party has a, an issue, a problematic issue, in that it appears based on evidence on the ground and statements made by real-life individuals that can be verified, etc., etc. And I don't mean making wild accusations, but it seems to me that it might very well be the case um, that, that leadership in the party is tolerating a reliance on a voting bloc demographic in America that is self-proclaimed white nationalists of various flavors. Because it isn't one empirical group, there isn't such a thing. Um, no, no self-proclaimed group is ever um, an empirical absolute monolith of anything. It's always a messy combination of all things. But of course, there's these common things. Uh, and that being said, I would not want Canada or my own beloved Mexico put a pin in that if that's confusing to you. I've talked about it before in the show and I'm sure I'll talk about it again. Um, If they were to decide, Mexico makes a little bit more technical sense, right? In large part because a big portion of the anchor of the rationalization is, you know, these territories belonged, once belonged to us. Okay. Well, Texas, California and, and portions of various other states once belonged to Mexico once, you know, were, uh, you know, on the maps officially as the, the sovereign territories of Mexico. And not like as they took them from anyone else. They just always were. That's where Mexico was. And, um, and well, history clearly shows uh, that money and violence and political pressure was, was applied quite Brut- brutally and liberally uh, to to acquire them, uh, and so what would I want uh, in some disgusting theoretical dystopian future? Uh, the, some some you know uh, militant Mexican president to use the pretextual excuse that the Republican Party is in bed with American white nationalists and, historically, guilty of, uh, of illegally annexing huge swaths of what was native, uh, sovereign, territorial lands of Mexico. Would I want them barreling in here? Of course not. Would I support that? Absolutely not. Would I want them to, you know, would I applaud them dropping bombs and, 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 and attacking, attacking from afar um, while simultaneously, you know, refusing to, to and, and doing very badly on, you know, the hand-to-hand combat? 
I would I would be stating the exact same things I'm I'm stating now about this conflict. Um, it it must end. Uh, if we try to end it with violence, uh, it'll backfire. Uh, and we must we must prevail in trying to prevent the accidental or uh, intentional escalation that drags in the rest of the world and makes this. Um, you know, that which we, we have not been calling the endless conflicts everywhere uh, uh, so far, uh, you know, for the last, like, whatever, is it 70 some odd years, 80 years? I guess it depends on the universe. Uh, so I, you know, to bring it home to a point where I can conclude this rambling, um, I bring it back to the plea that I make that we, we can indeed do something to end Theoretically, in broad strokes, speaking, speaking in broad strokes, the the cancer that is conflict and war, and and fighting, and murder, and that's by attending to the long neglected spiritual trauma that that sits behind the political ideology that is the motivating factor that is you know that brings about the otherwise sort of impossible to 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 explain behavior from individuals corrupted by uh, unwarranted levels of power and authority. Um, Because these are all ego-driven issues, right? They say money is the root of all evil, but money is a product of our imagination. We invented it. It didn't exist in nature, and then we became addicted to it, and we became problematically, you know, abusive with it. No. We invented it. Um, And therefore, uh, it, it, in the matrix of, of the worldview that I'm proposing, I put a pin in that because I've discussed that at great length in many episodes, and I'm sure we'll come back to, to focus on it again. Um, if we don't attend to ego, which is a, a, a valid, functional, organic phenomena, both at the individual level and at the interconnected spiritual level, Uh, because of fractal recursion, right? Like the seed is inside the fruit, which comes from the flower, which grows out of the tree, which developed from the seed. We w- There's a sort of physical correlation uh, that explains the spiritual correlation, right? Um, of, of, of the concepts that I'm pointing to. And I don't pretend to be some authority, authority on this. I just think that these things make the most sense. When compared to uh, an absolutely limited uh, materialist view. Now, on the materialist view, uh, on the purely pragmatic, technical sense of what's going on, I agree with the, with the general sort of school of thought that might be represented by um, uh, a former Ambassador McFowl. And that's that there is, a, there is a track record at play here uh, in terms of the way in which this military leader has behaved in the past. Um, so we must be on the lookout um, for a continuation of this aggression despite any promises uh, of, of wanting to you know, come to the negotiation table uh, with with a plan for peace, because you know the track record is is pretty spotty in this department, um, and and but but to to bring it back to the spiritual department, uh, there's not a lot that that you and I could do, right, dear listener? Like I, we can talk about it, we can make public statements to contribute to the public discourse about it, we can discuss it as a community of enthusiasts of this particular subject matter. Um, we can we can share our opinions and we can make our our our, our political stance known that we support uh, uh, those. Um, under duress because of this activity. Um, and if we limit ourselves to the material understanding of the world, to the pragmatic, um, you know, mechanical view, and that's, we, there's a pin on the corkboard already about my, my thoughts disambiguating between that and, um, you know, uh, the various other ways we could interpret um, uh, world views and spirituality. The moment we open the door to a spiritual understanding uh, and to this concept that 
uh, ego is not an enemy. It's not an evil, uh, uh, cartoonified outside source uh, of, of, of seduction into doing bad, but rather our internalized pain that comes from a deep rooted, long neglected spiritual trauma that we've just failed to address for various reasons that we can get into discussing, and I have in the past, um, and that attending to that is an individual and collective effort. That such a thing is not, you know, doesn't need to be considered one or the other. The, the, the two options are not mutually exclusive. <clears throat> and that by focusing inwards and uh, attempting to bring about our own individual healing, we can contribute to the healing of those um, that, that have yet to, to re- make the realization that they are being called to turn inwards and, and attend to their spiritual healing. I could be wrong, but if I were a betting man, this is the horse I would bet on. Because... Uh, of reasons that I can't, I can't make a good horse racing analogy about because I don't know very much about horse racing, despite a curious intersection with uh, horse racing professionals in my life at one point. Um, but that's a comical m- footnote to my life or, or to what's going on. Um, if I'm wrong, I apologize. If I'm right, if and it's not about me. If if these ideas are correct, uh, why are we not investing in them? And how on earth will we ever find out? If we just keep clutching our pearls and running away uh, and and sort of avoiding these things um, as we have in the past, right? And there, friends, I will plant the flag of today's episode and invite you to join me uh, momentarily for a brief moment of silence. Uh, and in in uttering your own prayer, using your own words, addressing your own deities, uh, but in in asking this one common ask, this common um, it, like this is the central core that I that I hope we can all all rally around, and that and that is this: let us pray for both the victims of this conflict and those instigating it. From the foot soldiers to the to the to the suffering individual at the very top, because this is all an expression of deep seated spiritual trauma causing and perpetuating itself vis a vis the 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 creation of suffering, um, and and let us not underestimate the suffering being suffered, uh, whether they acknowledge it or not, by those who are perpetuating this this and all other egregious acts of conflict uh, and let us include all other uh, militarized and and not militarized conflict in the world that wherever there is this Cain and Abel relationship being brought brought forth through manifestation wherever there is this this chaos being expressed in 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 a nation in a community in a family in a household uh, in a relationship, um, wherever there is uh, a transgressor and someone being transgressed upon, let us pray for both. Let us pray for the healing of both. Let us pray for the survival of both. Let us pray for the realization by both that they can end the conflict by embracing each other, accepting their differences, and helping each other heal. Let us pray, to end on a, on a light note, before we take the moment of silence, that Will Smith and Chris Rock have this aha moment for themselves and in their context and can patch up their, their, their disagreement and their conflict and their, and their emotional trauma and can turn inwards to address the healing that they need to attend to. In, 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 you know, whatever healing they need to attend to that brought them to that place that they both indulged in uh, in behavior that that is an example right it is it is um, what's the word uh, uh, emblematic it's not the word I wanted but it's close enough it's it's symptomology it's emblematic of the symptomology there's a good phrase um, that that is you know the root cause of any conflict 
Let us pray for that, dear friends, um, that, that refugees from every war, civil or international, that, you know, find solace and comfort and healing, and that the soldiers on the ground committing acts of organized murder for other people's profit come to that aha moment, that they have the power to end the conflict. To that end, let us take a moment of silence and say amen or whatever spiritual hallelujah makes sense. Thank you and namaste. As always, friends, I pray for you, uh, dear audience and internet uh, acquaintance that I do not know. Thank you for tuning in. I pray for healing and uh, and growth in your life. Um, and that I, I always pray that peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart. Um, go out and have a great day. And thank you for tuning in. Your support is deeply appreciated. Until next time. is what I've got to say about that. As always, thank you kindly for listening. This has been the Almost Daily Zencast with your humble host, the incorrigible Mr. Zappa. Until next time, may peace, love, and grooviness blossom in your heart.